Welcome back, everybody. This is Rodrigo Fonador with another episode of Actual Real Estate News. So today, we are going to have a little conversation about how to make sure that your home, away from home, is being kept well and uh, how to make sure that a property that's not your primary residence, essentially, is, you know, survives the winter, survives the summer, people aren't breaking into it, and basically when you show up to it to enjoy your second home, vacation home, et cetera, whatever it is, that it's in a position that you can enjoy it and you don't have to do a lot of maintenance when you walk through the door or anything like that. So to tackle this issue and to share some insights about things that probably I'm not aware of, maybe you're not aware of either, is uh, Matt Rooks with Roost Home Watch. I hope I got that as a little bit of a tongue twister. I realized as I was like spitting it out. <laughs> you did. You won't be the first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough, man. What's going on? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Good, good. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I always think it's a great starting point with conversations as far as finding out the story of how you got to Asheville. Asheville is a sticky place. Sure. I'm guessing you're not from here because most people aren't. So it's, safe, it's a safe guess. Yeah. So uh, what's your story? How'd you get here? Yeah, so um, I'm actually a native North Carolinian. I yeah. grew up um, outside of Wilmington, um, and then I went to school at UNC Charlotte. I'm just going to remind you to oh. get a little closer yeah, to that mic there that. so everybody can uh, yeah. hear it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I went to school at UNC Charlotte for my undergrad. Okay. Uh, I was there for about 10 years. I uh, got into work mm-hmm. after school, um, got laid off, mm-hmm. and uh, I was in my young, my mid-20s and wanted a little bit of adventure, so... I packed everything up and moved to Seattle. Okay. Yeah. Seattle's great, though. It's a beautiful place, man. It's it's, it's wonderful. Um, but uh, I was there for about five years, and uh, my my whole corporate career uh, has been in healthcare operations. Okay. So I did some uh, work out there for um, a big blood and tissue center um, that's kind of dominates the Pacific Northwest. Mm-hmm. And then uh, kind of missing all the family, all the friends back on the East Coast. Um, I started heading back, but I made a pit stop in Chicago. That's where my mom's from. I love Chicago, by Chicago's the way. Chicago's a great town. Yeah. Would, did you become a Bears fan while you were there? Because I'm I a did. big Bears fan. Really? Yeah, begrudgingly, yes, I oh, did. Oh, awesome. I what? was going to try to stay neutral because I'm actually a Seahawks fan. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh, I started like started getting into the Bears. When, w- when were you in Chicago? I was in Chicago from uh, 2010 to 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great sports city. I never picked a baseball team, though. I still rode the fence on that one. That's too bad. See, my grandma's a big Cubs fan, so by default, I am yeah, a, you have to. Yeah, it's kind of passed down. Absolutely, <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I uh, was ready to come back home to North Carolina, and um, had an opportunity to bring my job with me. Mm-hmm. So, I kind of opened up. That works out well. Yeah, that worked out really well. Um, and I wanted to get back into uh, the mountains. Um, didn't want to be. Too close to home that, you know, family could just pop in, mm-hmm. but uh, far enough away that they had to kind of call, you yeah. know. Uh, but I love the mountains. I fell in love with the mountains um, and mountain culture, outdoor activities, mm-hmm. outdoor lifestyles uh, when I was in Seattle. So um, I had friends here, too. We would vacation here as kids. So okay. I knew the area, but um, it's, it reminds me of a small Seattle. Hmm. Honestly, as a microcosm, if you will. Yeah. Probably have enough coffee shops to rival Seattle, yeah. right? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, that's how I got here. So how long ago was that? I'm um, coming up on five years at the end of okay. the month. Yeah. So got here five years ago mm-hmm. and now you watch people's houses. Yeah. I don't know if that's a too simplified of a definition, it. but yeah, tell us a little bit about what you do, I guess. Right. So home watch is, um, it's a budding industry. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's unregulated right now. I, I feel it will become more regulated in the future because like all things, like all things do. <laughs> right. Um, HomeWatch, the, the companies are popping up all over the, the U.S. and Canada yeah. and even in Europe and Australia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a, it's a real service that, that people are recognizing and, and realizing that they need. Mm-hmm. Um, so HomeWatch, uh, so I'm part of the National HomeWatch Association. So what is HomeWatch, though? So HomeWatch. Let's define it, yeah. Right. So the HomeWatch Association defines HomeWatch mm-hmm. as um, a, a visual inspection of a property for possible obvious issues. So those words are very are chosen very specifically because mm-hmm. we're not home inspectors. That's a licensed profession that 
you know, has a life of its own, um, a great, great profession. Um, and we're not home security personnel. We're in that middle space. We fill that gap uh, for the homeowner. So the basic uh, uh, premise is, is that when a homeowner is away from their home, whether mm-hmm. it be on vacation, uh, perhaps they have a second home and mm-hmm. they're, they're elsewhere at their primary home, um, or actually it's also useful for people who can't take care of their home. So think about you know aging in place mm-hmm. um, or, or folks that just don't want to be bothered with the, with the details, the day-to-day managing of, of their home. That's where we step in. So I guess, I, what do you guys do, I guess? I'm still like yeah. trying, I'm thinking like, so are you, I don't know, this is probably a terrible analogy. <laughs> so bear with me. But it sounds like you're like, that like awesome neighbor that some people have when they walk, they leave, their neighbor like comes over, waters the plants, you know. Yeah, the cape on. And yeah, like, well, I mean, you know, just like makes it look yeah. like somebody's living there, upkeeps the house, and then you come back from vacation and it, exactly. the house feels and looks like it's been lived in. Is that like exactly. a good analogy? We, or We, in essence, become the steward or, or the caretaker of the while pro- the owner okay. is away. Right. Okay. So, and that, and that in and of itself is a gamut of things, and it right. really depends on what each home watch company oh, yeah, wants to be. take on. So the basic service of any home watch company is going to be an interior and exterior physical in-person visit that goes through a certain um, uh, aspects. In in my case, in Roost's case, mm-hmm. we have a, a 54, I think it's actually 56 now, point checklist that goes through all the interior and exterior of the home. Huh. And, and that... And that checklist is a completely customizable to each property because each property is a little different. You know? Interesting. So, for example. Well, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I do want to get that. I'm just curious. How did you even get into this? Yeah, like, all right. It's not something – I don't know. I think the first time I heard of, like, a, a home watch company was maybe a year ago. Sure. Um, and you're the first person that I – you know, when we met, was I was like, oh – I'm meeting somebody in person who like yeah. provides the service or even uses the service. So how did you get into this? Yeah, so it kind of goes back to what I was saying a few minutes ago about being in Seattle. So yeah. when I was in Seattle, um, I, I purchased a property um, and chose to hold on to that property when, when I went to Chicago. Okay. So when I was in Chicago, I tried to manage my property in Seattle from thousands of miles away, Yeah. you know, uh, and I tried different things asking my neighbor to go by and check yeah. on it. You know, um, I tried renting it out, which mm-hmm. that was quite an adventure from renting it out. Well, we have a whole away. episode on uh, how to how to do long distance rentals. Oh yeah, I have to check that yeah. out. I might have missed that one. Um, but when I got to Asheville, mm-hmm. I, I built a house okay. um, with a great builder and um, was sitting on my porch one day. I, I, and it's in North Asheville, it's okay. in an area where there's a lot of second homes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was sitting there uh, contemplating my future, right, right, and uh, I noticed every car that went by uh, by my house was from out of state hmm. for about an hour. Wow! Every single one. That's crazy. Yeah, it was yeah. like two thirty in the afternoon or something like that. And I started thinking to myself, man, I know what those guys are going through. Like, who's who's watching their house from? I mean, we had like Florida, Ohio. I think I saw you know a, a tag from California. Um, And I thought, you know, about my experience owning a property and trying to take care of it from afar. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge. Even the smallest of places can be a challenge. I mean, when a house sits by itself, so much can happen. So I started thinking about that and I thought about my experience and I started thinking about what they must be feeling and going through it. They just want to, you know, come back to their property and enjoy it, yeah. not find issues, not having to tinker with stuff. You know, the, if you're lucky enough to be able to own a second property, right. I mean, you want to come back and enjoy that. Yeah, you want to enjoy it. Relax. Don't have to walk through the house and be like, all right, well, what am I going to have to fix right. now? What's right? that smell? Yeah. You know, is that, is that mold? Like, what is that? Yeah. You know? So uh, to answer your question, I started thinking like, hmm, you know, I've been, wa- I've been looking after my own properties for about 10 years, you know. Uh, various uh, condos, townhomes, mm-hmm. single family homes. I have a rental property as yeah. well. Um, so I started thinking like, I wonder if that's a thing. Like, I wonder if people are, I know people offer to watch houses, but can you make a business out of like, that? Yeah. Is this a business idea or a right. hobby? Right. Yeah. Like, how legit is it? Huh. You know? So I started doing some research, but I didn't know what it was called. 
I kept looking up property management. And as you know, that's a whole yeah. different profession as well. Um, and I just, I just kind of gave up. And literally one day I was at a party and <clears throat> a friend came up to me and said, hey, I found this book. You should really read it. And she said, I think this is kind of what you've been looking for. And I, I look at this book and it was all about how to take care of your home when you're Remotely, away from it. Yeah. And they kept using this term called home watch hmm. as, a, as an option, uh, right? Right. And so I was like, no, that's a weird term. <laughs> I've never heard like, that what's before. What's this? Yeah. What is that? And so I started Googling it and the world just opened up. And like I said, it's kind of one of those industries that's sort of under the radar, you know, that's kind of known in certain circles. Um, but I, my goal was to like, bring it out for the masses. Mm-hmm. And that's really where I'm trying to take my, my company. Fair enough. No, it's, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's interesting, right? Like how many conversations did he have with people to be like, Hey, this is what I'm interested in doing. Like, this is one thing I'm brainstorming for, you know, how many seeds did you plant for somebody at a party to randomly right. just be like, Hey, like, this is what we've taught, what you've told me about. And here you go. Right. And she found the book because she was thinking about leaving for six months and was like, what do I do with my house? Yeah. So yeah. was she your first client? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, good party then, huh? Yeah, it was, it was, it was a win-win. Um, so, yeah, so let's go back to this checklist, I guess. you know, when, So it's customizable. Is this like a la carte services that you guys get? Or it's like we got three different plans. We'll offer, you know, items one through 10 or then for plan one, items 11 through 30. For, or, or how does that work then? Actually, it's just a, a list of, of all the different things you can think of that might need to be looked at, right? Right, And so if I met with you and you were looking for the service, what we would do is we would, we would literally together walk through your house. I would show you, you know, what I do. Yeah. Um, and as we're walking through the house, I'll take note, you know, maybe you don't have a pool. You know, that's not an issue yeah. to think of. Um, maybe you, you know, maybe you have an outside kitchen mm-hmm. that needs to be added, you know, added to the, to yeah. the checklist. Um, you know, things like that. Right. And so the, the list just becomes, it comes a, a living document, if you will, and gets morphed to be unique to you know, your, it's, your property. Yeah. And then, then that list uh, it's not really a la carte. It's just more of a, of a customizable mm-hmm. option. Um, <clears throat> and then I don't have packages. I don't really believe in packages because I think, you know, this is a service that should be tailored for the individual and for that property. Um, I, I, you know, the only thing you can really consider as a, of a choice that needs to be made is if you do you want the basic home watch, which is just, you know, the, the, the customized checklist. Just drive by. <laughs> the, uh, right. Or I do have another option, which is the, the, the physical inspection plus adding some technology to it. Hmm. Other than that, it's completely customizable. Interesting. So what happens if you find something that needs to be addressed? Yeah. So question. do you address it? Like, do you have like hey, if it's anything that costs less than $1,000, don't call me, just deal with it, or? That's really all part of the initial conversation okay. with the owner, how comfortable the owner is with me making a decision without contacting them first right? or not, mm-hmm. really. So what we do is that checklist gets uh, put into an electronic report format. And each visit, whether it's a weekly or a biweekly visit or a customizable mm-hmm. cadence, um, that that checklist gets you know looked at every single time. Every single thing that's for your property uh, gets looked at, and then if I find something, it's a lot like a home inspection report. Okay. Like, to be honest, um, if I find something, um, I I take it like for example, say, you know, I I'm looking at the outside and I find some rot around the window trim. Yeah. Right. I'll take a picture of that and say, you know, dear property owner, I found this when I was at your house. Um, I highly recommend, you know, we do something about that. Um, do you want me to get some vendors right. that I vetted and I know and work with to, to do that? Or would you like me to use a vendor of yours? Um, and then I just sort of arrange it from there. Yeah. Now that makes sense. So, um, how, how long have you been doing this again for now? Well, the company, uh, started in January. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, but I have been looking after my own properties and some friends' properties right. over the years for about 10 years. So, so uh, when did you get this book then at the party? When was this party that changed everything? Uh, the, the infamous party was 
last September. So it happened pretty quickly then. Yeah. So talk to us about this association, right? You mentioned uh, that you're part of a Home Watch National Association, right. Or, or right? Yes, the National so Home Watch Association. What uh, what do they do, or what's their job? How do they? I mean, I'm guessing that they're some sort of governing body, or are they more like educational? Um, a little of both. Okay. So you know, because the Home Watch industry is is not regulated, right? Um, there's no licensure that's required for mm-hmm. it. Um, the Home Watch Association started about 10 years ago. I think they actually just celebrated their 10th anniversary at the conference. Um, And their whole mission is to put arms around the industry, Mm -hmm. to set standards, um, to create educational opportunities, to create certifications in lieu of licensure requirements. Um, And they do, they, they, they vet your business, they vet your business model, they do uh, criminal background checks mm-hmm. on the principles of the company. Um, uh, you're expected as a principal, as part of the association, to do the, sen- the same for your employees. Um, they have the only home watch specific insurance policy. Interesting. Um, for the, and you can only get that as Through being them, a member. Yeah. Um, other than that, they're more like a, um, a guide, hmm. if you will. Yeah. Very cool. So, what's been the the hardest thing the the first four months? The the sales part. As that's, far as that's selling, that's been the hardest thing. Finding all people who are interested, or convincing, or explaining to people why it's a benefit to work with you. Yes. Explain <laughs> like explaining <laughs> no, so, the benefit. Well, my whole background has been operations, so I stood everything up like fast because that's what I've been used to do. I've always been on the back end of sales, so the front end, the networking. The, the, the advertising, the creativity yeah. part of that, that's all been my, my growth opportunity. Explaining the benefit hasn't really been the hard part. What I did not anticipate before I went into this is having to first educate people on what how much is before yeah. I can get to talking about the benefit. Can't sell something people don't understand. Right. It's right. not like um, you can say, you know, I'm a home inspection company. Everyone right. knows what home inspection is. Yeah, they understand is. that. Yeah. So how's that? What are you doing then? Do you guys have like, so yeah, how do you interact with people? Is it you? Do you have other people on your team or? I'm the owner operator. You wear all the hats? Many hats, yes. No doubt. So, huh. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting, right? Because we, we face something similar for what we do. You know, we buy houses cash, right? right? And most people, when they think about selling their house, they think of two options, right? I'm going to Fizbo it for right. sale by owner. I'm going to list it with a real estate agent. And it's like, hey, we exist. We're not for everybody. It might make sense for you, might not. But like, let me explain to you how our process works, how we come up with our offer. And then you get to make the decision. And uh, we've come across that too. It's like, hey, let me ex- educate you on what we do first and then find out if what value we add is what you're looking for, what you need. Mm-hmm. What's the, What do you find that people get thrown off, off by the most? Um, I'm just curious, like on this one. I think people, the idea of handing over keys and alarm codes and and all of that really sensitive, secured information yeah. is one of the deciding factors of, of doing it. I, I also think a lot of people don't realize just how vulnerable their home is. So you think people kind of get scared once you like um, talk to like I, I could see that being the case for me, being like. Hey, I don't think I need you, but like I'm intrigued. Come on over. And then you yeah. come on through and you're like, holy cow. Like maybe I really do need you, but now I'm kind of like paralyzed by the fact that there's so much, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes, right? Right. I think there's probably maybe a little bit of that. Yeah. I, I hope I, I'm not scaring people. <laughs> but um, I think uh, the, the main thing that I've gotten out of this so far yeah. is just making people aware. One of the biggest issues um, is insurance, homeowner's insurance. That's one Truth, of the most yeah. people aren't really, I mean, who's really sitting there reading their policy? Yeah, going to work, yeah, right? no, so true. We, uh, you know, Jared, I think, yeah. right? So he's been to a couple of our meetups and stuff, man. And yeah. we've, we've talked to him, I don't know, two or three times. And that's the one thing, like every time he's like, totally makes a huge difference how often you stay in your property and what's happening in between. Yeah. And most people don't think about it, right? You get your policy like once and then you just kind of like set on an auto pay and walk away. Sure. But what people don't realize, and it really depends on your carrier, right? You know, um, is that you know if you leave your property for a, a period of time de- defined by the carrier, yeah, 
um, there's a really good chance if something were to happen, either you're not going to be fully covered or covered at all. Yeah. And and I don't, I don't, that's not a scare tactic that I want to use. It's more like, I didn't know that's an educational (laughs) piece though. That's a huge thing. Yeah. And the, uh, insurance information Institute, um, even has come out and said, you know, having someone come by on a regular basis to check your property may make a world of change in your, in your insurance policy. No, I, I mean, it's not negligence at that point, right? right? So exactly. That makes a lot of sense. So, um, yeah, that's super interesting. So m- all of the properties are vacant that you work with, right? Or do you ever partner with, like, property management companies for property for people who are, you know, out-of-state landlords? So I think um, traditionally how much companies have focused solely on the vacant homes. Yeah. What I am trying to do uh, with my model mm-hmm. is make it for the masses. So, yeah, so we've got homes that are – unattended is the term really. Um, uh, we have homes that are um, just for people who are on vacation for a couple right. of weeks. We'll go by yeah. once or twice while they're gone and do that. Um, we are partnering with realtors. Uh, we actually are a bit with realtors and, yeah. uh, for listings. Like for example, if they have a listing that they're trying to get ready for the market, um, we can take the load off of realtor's shoulders to, to manage all of that with that homeowner, we hmm. can do that for them. Gotcha. That's um, cool. Vacant homes that are sitting on the market, completely just empty. You know, those yeah. homeowners have just gone on to the next thing. Those are really susceptible to issues, um, hmm. and we can look after those. Makes sense. Um, property management companies, um, yeah, we actually are in talks right now with a property management company here in town to be another option for them um, or an extra pair of hands. To look at to look after their their right. items as well, hmm. um, it really can run the gamut, and that's really what I want. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, quick question: Going back to the codes and the security things, like if somebody's listening to this, like that would make sense. Like I'm like, why would I want to hand all that information sure. over to? Like I understand why I need to, but like what security or what systems are built in place on your end to you know give somebody confidence, like, hey, you can hand this, like, really secure information over to me. Give me a copy of your house, et cetera. Right. That's a really good question. Um, so we've got a couple of things going on. All of the the keys that we have mm-hmm. are kept in an electronically secured uh, okay. lockbox, um, and they are de-identified. So uh, a set of keys only has a number on it. It's not an address. It's not a, cu- a customer's name. It's hmm. de-identified from the customer using a, an internal code that, that awesome. came up that with. Awesome. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then all of the, um, security alarms, security questions, all of those sorts of things are stored in a, an app that, uh, was designed by an affiliate of the Homewatch Association. Okay. And it uses, um, encryption that's, uh, meets the European and American standards. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same, uh. Uh, encryption that Amazon uses. I really? Believe. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, it's good, good encryption then. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then any other information, I have a uh, two-step uh, verification process to get in. Hmm. Yeah. No, yeah. So you're, the information's safe. Yeah, I mean, as, as it in can short, be. right? Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what what is what do you think's been the funnest thing that you've experienced in the last four months since you started? Like, I'm getting to see a lot of uh, Western North Carolina. I bet. Yeah. How far How far is your reach? My my service area is Buncombe, Haywood, and Henderson counties. Um, and I'm getting to see parts of those areas that I've never have seen or I would never yeah. just generally go to. And man, we live in a really beautiful, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful place. And some people have really the views they've got from their their homes are just amazing. No doubt. Yeah. And the other thing I think too is people. You know, I'm I'm an introvert by nature. Yeah. So you're asking what the hardest thing is. It's some of the, the networking is part of the part of the things I'm I'm working on. But I'm finding that Asheville. If you want to be a small business owner in Asheville, this is the place. To, or you want to be a small business owner, this is the place to do it. We have so many free resources to get started. And I generally find that other small business owners really want to help each other out. And it's building that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a really um, fun and, and uh, experience. Very cool, man. Well, excited to see how everything keeps progressing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now I hear, you know, as we wrap things up, I guess, most importantly, how does somebody connect with you? Yeah, our website, um, we have a pretty good website, I, th- I think, uh, www.roosthomewatch.com. Um, all of our information is there. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, And then just really what we want is 
for you to contact us, uh, you can contact us at the website or you can call us. Uh, our phone number is 828-505-1003. Mm-hmm. Um, and we really want to have that face-to-face consultation with you. We offer a free uh, in-person consultation because really we need to know who you are. You need to know who we are. Yeah. Um, and we need to see the property in order to give you a really, you know, um, good, accurate uh, quote. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, any parting thoughts for somebody who has a home away from home and be like, hey, this might be something you've not thought of, but you should think of. Um, What's one of the things people get surprised about? When you're walking through their house and you're like, hey, like, can we talk about this? And someone's like, oh, I would never have talked to, you know. Let's see. Um, you know, I, I have to say so far. Yeah. The thing that people aren't really thinking about is, uh, and it sounds pretty simple, but just making sure that water is running away from your house. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of downspouts from the gutters. Mm-hmm that um, are just pouring water right at the foundation of the house. And we've had a lot of rain lately, too. Yeah, no, that's a big one, though. Yeah, um, and when you might not see water in your basement or in your your whatever, but that water is going to get in there eventually, and and that's going to cause a whole host of issues. So I think just just look at your your downspouse uh, the next time, or your whole gutter system, really, the next time it rains. Just make sure that your water's not coming over the gutters. Yeah. Uh, which is a sign of you got clogged yeah. <laughs> or uh, making sure you've got, you know, uh, water's r- running away run off, from running the house. Away. Yeah. 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 And the insurance things as and a quick reminder. Yeah. If your house is vacant, talk double your check your policy, agent. do yeah. all of those good things. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for joining yeah. us on the podcast. Hope yeah. to see you at the next meetup. Yeah. Um, as a reminder, everybody, first Wednesday of every month at Archetype, uh, we do a meetup, drink good beer, mm, talk shop. And, uh, yeah, hope to see everybody out there. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, take care, Matt. See you guys all next Tuesday. Take care.